Today, I'm going to be revisiting the Wraith AR from the military set. This is available in the military llamas. They come around kind of randomly. I'm going to flashbang in a second here, but my timeline in the description of every single video actually shows that we get military llamas sometime during the Christmas season. You can see right about here, it's like one military llama on the 23rd, and then we did get a few in late December, early January. I don't know if that's going to repeat. So we really don't see military llamas much. So if you want this weapon, you are most likely going to have to flux it. It's not that big of a deal because it's a pretty good weapon. I think I've ranked this weapon pretty highly before in like the top 10 list. It's kind of like number seven, and that's kind of where this weapon lies. You're, you've probably been seeing in the gameplay on screen that it's pretty good. It is a strong weapon. Weapon. It will kill the smashers in a okay amount of time. I did try this with blast in the past and I recorded plenty of gameplay from it I'll probably put an indicator on screen somewhere to indicate when I'm showing a blast in the past build versus totally rocking out Because I wanted to see how well does this weapon stand on its own totally walking out can make any weapon good by increasing the crit rating by a ton and making it crit more often and do more damage with rock and riff It's a really good perk for damage But I wanted to see is this weapon good without all those bonuses and the answer is yes It's not extremely exceptional with blast in the past. It's more of a tanky build less focus on damage of course but it was killing them okay and my talking right there probably gave it enough time to kill a smasher too and then you can also see that it's good against crowds you know it does enough damage of the crit to basically one shot an enemy if you're running affliction you don't need to target on that enemy you can wave through the crowd it does okay versus takers and miss monsters etc it's a solid weapon with totally rocking out it's even better shockingly i'm gonna make it quick in that note but it does kill smashers relatively quick i did have an opportunity where i was able to solo a mini boss it was by no means a record-breaking mini boss kill but it worked eating wafers to reactivate my toy rocking out did increase my crit rating and i did more damage and it was really nice to see it's a strong weapon but the wraith itself is a slow firing kind of high accuracy high crit chance ar that does really good per bullet damage what all of that means if we look at the stats here ignore the reload by the way this is a glitch it is not a one second reload that's a bug at the time of recording but this weapon does really good single target damage note i'm in kind of a full party here so these aren't like real real numbers and i do have a loadout buffing the damage but the base crit chance of these suppressed weapons like the Silent Spectre, the Whisper 45, and the Wraith, the silenced weapons have a base crit chance of 20. Most ARs and most SMGs in the game have a base crit chance of 10. That means you're critting twice as much without a crit rating perk. You are going to want a crit rating perk, and that brings it to a 48% chance to crit instead of the usual 38%, which is really good. That is, as most people can imagine, almost every other shot. Almost. Almost every other shot, which is really, really good. You're critting a ton, you're doing a lot of damage, and that's why you basically have to run a crit build on this. This is a best perks video after all. I like to introduce the weapon, show what it's good for, and then maybe a loadout after that, which we will be getting into. But these are the standard perks for the Wraith. If you want that crit rating, you want that double crit damage, I'm going to talk about some alternatives, but I want to continue saying that this weapon is pretty accurate. So if you're critting a good amount of time, you're doing good damage per bullet, you can use that first shot accuracy to some effectiveness, but the bloom is kind of a problem. This weapon is slow firing and not accurate, which means most of the times your bullets are just not going to connect. You have to be really close to your enemies. It's not good for spamming a single target so you kind of have to be careful when you run this i did sort of make up for that in my triple crit damage video i'll be talking about that perk option later of course but link to that down below if you guys want to see more triple crit damage footage that is a whole video showcasing a very fun loadout not necessarily recommended but hey it actually kind of worked so now that we've gotten all that out of the way let's talk about why we picked these perks obviously high crit chance critting doing more damage is solid i ran mine water because the mission that i was recording in today was fire i recommend whatever element matches the season you're on I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to link my elements video in the description down below where you guys can learn more about all the different elements. And then I'm going to flash bang you one more time here with the uh, yearly timeline full screen. So yeah, on the right hand side of the spreadsheet, it actually shows you what seasons are what. I'm currently recording this in late January. Uh oh. So I have kind of a crazy upload schedule that might not be late January when this video goes up. I'm sorry in advance, but this season has all the different elements. So ideally, if you're trying to make good use of the Wraith, you're going to want one of each element. If that's not available to you, I completely understand it. You can go ahead and you can re just run an energy that'll work for all the different ones. Just know that if you haven't watched that elements video yet, energy does 75% to uh, elemental targets and full damage to normal targets. If you want to do full damage to all the targets in like a nature season, for example, you could just run a fire Wraith and that would do its normal damage to every single target, which is really good. Then we got fire in this season, all the elements, and then water again in the uh, December holiday time. So the spreadsheet is really good because you are probably not watching this video day one. <laughs> you are probably watching this in the future. It might have been a year or two and uh, deciding what season you're on and 
picking the appropriate element is very crucial. If you're before Canny Valley, you can get away with physical. That's fine. Canny Valley is when elemental targets become a little bit more common. And if you overlevel your wraith to like 106 and you're still running candy missions, you can probably run physical and be just fine. But once you get to mid and upper twine, you're absolutely going to want to pick the appropriate element. Now we've talked about the element and the uh, perk options here, but this reload speed, I actually do recommend it. Again, we are not getting a one second reload, but it is a faster reload. It's not a super fast reloading weapon and you are not going to be needing to reload too often with a 6.43 fire rate. It's not shooting super fast. You can run mag size if you want. If you wanted to run crack shot in the lead who ups your damage based on every bullet you fire, that's capped at 50. You might want to do mag size, but I wouldn't really recommend that pairing anyway. I think reload is just perfectly fine to reload quickly, get back into the fight you're not exactly draining your mag fast anyway so i don't personally think you need a mag size perk but that's totally preference both are really identical dps uh this is kind of a universal rule in save the world besides shotguns shotguns that reload with shells you always want mag size because it it factors the reload time based on all of the shells you have so a mag size perk actually reloads about as fast as a reload perk but then you get more bullets so not shotguns but for anything with a magazine that includes magazine shotguns like the room sweeper or the tiger jaw anything with a magazine reload and mag size are functionally identical. I think reload on average the DPS is like 4% better. It's not something you're going to notice and getting back to the fight quickly is preferred typically, but uh, mag size can totally work, especially if you're running Chaos Agent. Again, I don't really recommend that for this build, but maybe considering the slow fire to the weapon, you might have enough time for your grenades to go off cooldown because if you're running this weapon with a soldier lead, as you probably are, you're going to be needing your grenades, your shockwave, your minigun to reload quicker. So it's kind of a clunky build. You can run mag size and Chaos Agent. I just wanted to cover that, even though I just recommend reload and turning off your brain from there. As for the main perks, though, triple crit damage, if you're running totally rocking out, is fine. If you just want to crit a bunch, it's not super recommended, but it is fun and it does work. And there is one more consideration for this perk setup. If you wanted to run a crit rating perk up here, a crit damage perk on the bottom, and a fire rate perk instead of crit rating, you would actually do more DPS. I personally discovered this really thoroughly in my pain train video. I'm going to link that down below where I go a lot more in depth than I will here today. But fire rate is technically higher DPS and crit rating double crit damage on a lot of different weapons, but with this weapon, like I said, with the inaccuracy and the high per bullet damage, I'm not sure if I recommend fire rate. This is not a very spray and pray weapon. It's not an SMG and using it as such might not feel as good. And that's where I can kind of recommend crit rating double crit damage. You'll get the most out of your bullets if you're just critting for more damage in this way. But if you wanted to do optimal damage, it would be fire rate, crit rating, then crit damage. And that's sort of the, the best rounded out way to do it. Like I said, though, bloom, accuracy, be careful with that. So the only thing to mention from there is triple damage. A lot of people like to run damage perks on these because they don't like fishing for crits. I totally get you. I understand it. This is the one weapon set, you know, the Wraith, the Sound Spectre and the Whisper 45. Maybe the Storm King's Onslaught, because it has a base crit chance of 25%. But those four weapons are usually the only exceptions to that rule, where you're already critting half the time. That is totally valid. You know, fishing for crits isn't really fishing anymore when it's every other bullet, so I don't think it's that big of a deal. If you wanted to run reload and just triple damage, you could. It would work. It would kill the enemies. You could do fire rate double damage, but... That's not super recommended. It's not the highest DPS. It, it won't kill any faster, and I just don't uh, don't think I recommend that. So the six perk. The six perk is the only remaining conversation. I recommend Affliction. It is really strong in our current version of the game. It does a ton of damage per tick. You can target multiple enemies, just tap, 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 and Affliction will finish them all off. Affliction can also crit, so if you're already running Totally Rockin' Out, you're you're doing great with Affliction. It's really, really strong. The only filler perks we have here are like five headshots in a row, which I don't recommend. Snaring, if you want to slow enemies down, you can. This used to be the best option back in the day when Affliction did no damage whatsoever. That's actually a note that I can add from my previous Wraith video back, back when I recorded that. Affliction did no damage, and Slow and Snare was like the superior option, but Slow and Snare has never been better in my brain. I've always preferred Affliction, just doing more damage right now to multiple targets at the same time. And then these bottom two perks are, again, just preference. If you like playing slow, standing up on your base, and not moving much at all, you will get a 55% damage bonus from this, and whatever 17 times 5 is. I don't want to do the math, but it's more than 11 times 5, so whatever. If you want to do more damage versus miss monsters or to everything, and you're willing to stand still for a bit, that's great. I'm a gamer that never sits still. Affliction does wonders. If you can stand still, and you can be fine with that, 
side, these bottom perks can give you a ton of damage at the cost of mobility. Because as soon as you get pushed away, as soon as you get knocked to the side, you lose that bonus and then it's completely gone. I much prefer just sticking with Affliction and doing tons of damage from that. So because this video has actually ran a bit longer than I expected, I'm just going to show a quick overview. This is by no means a thorough soldier loadout build guide, but I'll just show you the two loadouts I uh, have already been running in this video. So Rescue Trooper in the lead, 50% extra damage. Everybody should have her. Blast in the Past just triples your health. Super solid. Saurian Might gives you a nice little extra damage bonus every second. You get one little bonus from him. Saurian Hide from Prehistoric Iza. She gives you some extra armor. Really standard stuff for Blast in the Past here. Assault Grit Damage. He's going to be our commander in the Totally Rocking Out perk. So uh, extra support, you know, 75% extra damage is great when you're critting half the time. In fact, for a weapon that crits this much, he should probably be in the lead in the Blast in the Past build, but I just wanted to stick to a standard loadout. Now, Assault Ammo Recovery, super useful. He essentially functions as a mag size perk because sometimes you shoot the bullet, it does damage, but it just doesn't consume ammo in your mag. So you just shoot longer. And he actually applies to the bullets that you save in your mag. So it's a 24% chance not to consume, but it's realistically a 31.7% mag size increase. It's super useful. And if you're running glass in the past, you need coconuts. You have so much health. Coconuts give you a third of your health right away and you heal for 30 seconds afterward. And with Crossbones Barrett giving you coconuts, he gives you a 16% damage bonus on top of that. You can't not use coconuts if you're running blast in the past now for the totally rocket out sludge and lead as mentioned as i've been talking about the team perk here gives you a huge crit rating bonus and it heals you battle beat and subwafers super great she gives you a nice little damage bonus with rock and riff and it activates the team perk and then subwafers i've been using throughout that gameplay because you just eat a subwafer activate your team perk immediately and it's really really useful some people like fumble in support instead i think for a weapon like this it doesn't really work but yeah, if you just want to kill enemies have a seven percent chance to pick up a fumble football that's fine i prefer subwafers because i can activate it at my leisure and with battle beat it's also super Super nice because you're usually getting those kills and the only reason i'm using saurian might is because of a glitched interaction with battle beat every one second he adds that extra damage and when he adds that extra damage if you kill an enemy with that bullet his damage plus your damage counts as two kills for battle beat for some reason i only mention this bug i usually don't like loadouts based on bugs but i only mention this because it's been around for years really long time it's just obviously not going anywhere and if it does get fixed in the future eh, he's still a good pick it's you're not really missing out on anything but yeah activating this in less than uh, 10 kills is maybe kind of nice maybe kind of nice assault ammo recovery and the rescue trooper ramirez were already featured but i'll give you one alternative if they do fix sorry and might you can always get away with uh, locked and reloaded skull ranger ramirez or uh, skull trooper jonesy i think is what he's called the, the male alternative same support perk you just get a 50 percent damage bonus when you reload super nice and i already mentioned chaos agents so if you're running that mag size perk I mentioned earlier, you can use him in support and then you can just reload with your uh, grenades or shockwave and uh, <gasps> that'll get you going. So there's a very thorough breakdown on the best perks for the Wraith, introducing the weapon, showing how good it is. It's a top 10 AR for sure, maybe in the bottom five uh, out of 10 in my opinion, uh, but it's super strong and it's good enough because even the 10th AR in like my top 10 ARs list, link down below, I suppose, is still a strong weapon and you should absolutely not ignore this weapon. If you're looking to have a good time, those are the perks. Those are a couple of loadouts you can use. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new. Like the video, please. It does help a lot and I'll see you guys in the next one. A couple of recommended here right at the end. And then...